I just picked up this apple grinder because it's apple season here in Germany, but it's hand crank and I think we can do just a little bit better than that. At first I used this DeWalt drill and at the lowest setting with a partial hold down of the trigger I was able to achieve a great RPM for apple grinding. However, this caused me to have an extra workstation in my workflow because I had to man the grinder the entire time it was grinding. The goal of this video is to automate this grinder enough that I can let it run while I'm working on other processes. Enter the cheap concrete mixing drill from Amazon. This is a 220 volt mixer, which means I'll only be able to use it for the next four years until I move back to the States. By the time that happens, this whole thing will need to be rebuilt and refinished anyways, so this will work nicely for the next few years. It came with a sweet mixing bit. I won't be using it here, but it may be useful in the future, so I'll throw it on the shelf. I did cut the threads off the end and welded it to a bike sprocket, as small as I could find. This bike sprocket has 14 teeth and we'll be marrying it up to a 42 tooth sprocket here on the grinder itself. This will let us reduce the RPM down to one quarter of what the mixing drill spins at. And even though it's a low RPM drill, we want this to be even slower with a little bit more torque. I hate it when YouTube videos do really bad examples of welding, and here I am doing a really bad example of welding. However, I haven't cracked the code on how to get argon yet here in Germany, so I'm using flux core, and I have not yet mastered flux core MIG wire welding. This is right about the time where I realized that the mixer spins the wrong direction for the extended shaft on the grinder. Unlike most drills, it doesn't have a reverse setting. It only goes one direction. And since it's alternating current, even if I switch the leads, it still goes the same direction due to the sine wave function of an alternating current. And it doesn't reverse directions like you would see with a direct current or DC. So if I can't reverse the direction of the drill, I'm going to have to switch out the main stainless steel shafts on this grinder so that I can spin the other shaft, allowing it to spin the correct direction, which is inward for this grinder to work. Basically, it's a hardware solution to an electrical issue that I have. The biggest problem with this whole process is that these are stainless steel shafts and I don't have a good way of drilling through them. So I have to use the register pins in the exact same locations as they were used previously. This meant that instead of drilling the shafts, I had to drill through these aluminum cogs, gears, grinder bits, whatever you want to call them, in order to make sure that I could pin them in place and allow them to actually engage on the apples. This honestly took over half the time of the entire project, just getting these torn down, reassembled, and put back where they mesh properly and are all facing the same way. As you can see, I've made several mistakes in the time lapse and I've had to rebuild them several times just to get them to work properly. Since these two grinder heads are interlocking, one will spin clockwise and one will spin counterclockwise, which is why it's a good solution to having an electric motor that spins the wrong direction. All right, we fed that fed horse enough. We've got them assembled. Let's go ahead and put them back on the frame and see if we can get them to work. Shockingly, during this time, I did not lose any of the hardware. I usually have a little magnetic tray, but it reflects really poorly in the camera and causes all kinds of lighting issues. So I just piled it up in the middle and hoped that I didn't knock a washer off onto the floor. I also found that with this particular grinder, I was able to move those bushings on the end just a little bit and take out some of that extra slop that has developed from using these nylon rings, by which I mean bushings. If you have a keen eye, you can see that there's little holes on top of those end caps, which allows me to drop some olive oil or some peanut oil or vegetable oil in there and lubricate these with a food safe lubricant while I'm using this in case any of it gets into the apple mash. All right, finally rebuilt and assembled and working. Time to play around with that new motor. Now I grew up repurposing a lot of different devices and improvising items that I needed out of items that I had. This led me to embrace the phrase, that I've done so much with so little for so long that now I can do anything with nothing. However, these days I've spoiled myself and I will buy brand new equipment just to tear it apart and make it into something new. In a pinch, I would like to think that I still have the ability to improvise from the garbage that I have around the house, but I will admit to buying this and for the sole purpose of deconstructing and reconstructing into something else. These little access panels on the side made it really easy to pull the brushes out and disassemble and reassemble this multiple times in order to get the correct fit at the end of the day. There are definitely better options out there when it comes to electric motors, 
There are brushless models out there. The DeWalt series that I am very fond of uses brushless motors. However, these old brushed motors are very easy to understand for me, and I'm more familiar with this older style construction. It makes it a lot easier for me to manipulate and improvise with. If you're not familiar with electric motors, basically these brushes allow for continuous connectivity of the electrical current to a rotating shaft using a graphite end piece and a spring to push it in place. It's important that during construction, I don't cover up any of these vents so the motor doesn't overheat while I'm using it continuously to grind apples. Quick test of the electronics, make sure that everything works and that I didn't overly break it. We're off to mock this up and see where we can mount it. I opted for a large two by eight screwed into the end of the grinder. I really want this to be one thing that I can pick up and move around and set down and this large wooden platform will give me the opportunity to do that. Having a nice solid thick slab of pine is an excellent base to work off of for building the rest of the support structure for this drill motor. I apologize for the angle here. I am a bit too zoomed in to show you, but I'm trying to get the length of the chain established so that I can start pulling tension and finding out where that motor finally lands. A few quick cuts with the grinder later, and we're able to snap this chain into its approximate location and build everything off of this. Optimally, I would have a tensioning system that would go into this. I do plan on creating some threaded sliding rods that allow me to move the motor back and forth so I can manually adjust the tension. My first test was an immediate failure. The chain fell off instantly, but it was because I was holding the motor slightly sideways and not in line with the main sprocket. Some small adjustments here show that it's possible to keep the chain on it, even though I have some wiggle in my sprockets. So here's what I came up with. I'm using some leftover pieces of this beach countertop. It's a nice hardwood and I put it in a box construction so it reinforces itself. You can use wood glue or epoxy for things like this. I ended up using epoxy to set the motor in place and I routered out the exact profile of that motor so it cannot rotate. I used the old handle mounting point for the second point of attachment and then screwed it directly down with epoxy and wood glue on every joint. The downside with this construction is that if I had to take it apart, it would have to be uh, destructive. But as I said before, this has only got to work for a couple of seasons, and then I'll be rebuilding it with a US spec motor anyways. This is the part of the project where I would typically put it together and make it work and work with what I've got. But I find that filming these for YouTube has increased my level of attention to detail. I'm taking the time to screw everything in place, solder the connections appropriately, and do it properly so that it's something I can be proud of because I know that dozens of you will see this. As you probably saw, I use a little bit of flux when I solder these connections. It just makes it a lot easier for that solder to take. It takes heat a lot faster, it conducts a lot faster, and I get better connectivity throughout. I wish I had some heat shrink here, but I ended up just taping it all down and building a nice little hickory box to go around everything. Mocked it up with hot glue and then epoxied it into place. If you do a build like this, make sure that you have some drain points in the bottom in case water does get in there and also make sure that cord is strongly secured to the side of the project so it doesn't rip out and destroy your electronics. So those are the two ways to quickly destroy it. First test run, looks like it's running pretty well. I've still got a pretty significant wiggle in that main sprocket, but it's thin metal and I was able to pry it straight using a pair of vice grips later. If you look closely on the final run of this, you'll see that there's very little wiggle left in that sprocket chain assembly. In these shots, it's still unpainted and I'm just running through the basic test to make sure the chain doesn't fall off before waterproofing and final assembly. So after less than a minute of testing, let's assemble it and run 120 pounds of apples through it nearly continuously. I say nearly continuously because with three of us chopping apples nonstop, this thing still outpaced us and we had to keep turning it off because it just didn't have anything to grind. I was still concerned that it was spinning too quickly, as you can see the apples bouncing around a lot, but it's grinding them up faster than we can keep up with, so I'm going to call it a win. It did eventually get that one apple. As you can see here, a lot less wiggle in the sprocket. It's running smoothly and grinding into these five gallon buckets. It ended up doing six bucket loads in one sitting and had no issues the entire time, and the mash ended up nice and fine, perfect for crushing, and you can see that in my other videos.